fresh out the oven. What is cracking, everybody? It's Mega Pie Man here. Welcome back to some more Tower of Guns. Dev build 0. 0.63 chisel. Last time didn't go so well. I got a bunch of those random badges and ended up dying. So I didn't learn my lesson. Now I've learned my lesson. I will not get random badges anymore. This time, we're taking lift ticket, we're taking Egon's Pride, and we're going for endless mode. So that's on. I'll, I'll turn these off just to make sure that, you know, we've seen a pop-up a lot. I think, I don't think there's anything new for them to really say, so it's from the dialogue off. I'm going to try endless mode because I want to unlock this. Beat stage six in endless mode. I want to unlock it. I highly doubt I'll actually be able to, but I want to at least try to get it. That's going to be my next goal, unlocking that. If I get the chance to unlock any more of this stuff by finding uh, a few more items or by killing a few more tanks, that'd be great. Or killing more spike ball launchers, that'd be awesome. But I want to try to unlock this at the moment. So let's get going, shall we? Entering the foyer. Brooks was here. Who's Brooks? On the loading screen said Brooks was here. I don't really know who Brooks was, or... Are you talking about Garth Brooks? Uh, what was that? Brooks and Dunn? Is that the name? I think that was the name. I can't think of any other Brooks that I know of outside of uh, the, the babbling Brook. It's both a guy and girl name, I think. No, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a girl name, and it's a last name. Ooh, health of great. That is a nice thing to get right off the bat. Thank you, my Hugbot compatriots. Your sacrifice was not in vain. Your sacrifice will never be in vain. As long as you give me good upgrades. Ooh, spec ball launchers. I still gotta kill over a hundred of you. If I never get the chance to, I'll go for them. But mainly, I'm just gonna try to get to stage six. The only time I'll deviate from trying to get to stage six is spike ball launchers or the uh, heavy tanks normal tanks. I don't know. Are they the heavy tanks? Are the, the the small tanks the normal tanks and the big ones the heavy tanks? Or are the... Uh, I didn't bring... Pick it up there because I didn't bring bluegrass. Dang it. It's like, are the big tanks heavy tanks or are they just know the normal tanks? And holy crap, I got a jump upgrade. It's like, are, are the small ones the mini tanks and the big ones the normal tank? Or is the small one the normal tank and the big one the... Heavy tank? I don't know. I don't really know if there's a difference between the two of them outside of one's bigger, one's smaller. I don't know if they're the exact same name. Apparently, by name, the big one is the tank, according to the game. So, by name, what is the small one? I know these are spin bots, just because they're similar to Mama's spin bot. I guess these are, I'm just gonna call those bomb bots, and then you have the turrets that shoot who knows what, anything, really. But out of what has a name, I don't know what the small tanks necessarily are named. Are they just like mini tanks or small tanks or does it, does it matter? The champion spin bot in there, hopefully he drops some good crap. I could go for some good crap right now. Crap isn't stuff. If you didn't know what I was talking about. Give me all of these blue gems. Weapon level upgrade, nice. And lots of money. Got stuck on a something. I don't know. Was I stuck on a, on a spin bot? Did it jump out and grab me? There's a lot of blue gems here. Which is good. The more I can upgrade my gun now, the easier the boss will be. And the more of a chance that I will actually be able to go on six levels. How many levels would six be? Would that be to the Sanctum? Possibly. I don't know if, if I have to beat six levels. It's, I think I have to make it to level 6. I don't necessarily know if, if it'll count if I just make it, or if I have to beat it. So that possibly means if 6 levels is the Sanctum, that I would have to beat the Gumball Machine. Unless 6 levels is the level after the Sanctum, which means I will have to beat the Gumball Machine and keep going. But you know, could happen now that I know the tricks of the Gumball Machine. Last time I almost beat it, but... I didn't really know the tricks of it, so I was kind of messing around most of the time, just standing off by the door. Now that I know the tricks of the gumball machine and know... Ah, yeah, I can't make that. And know exactly what I need to do to beat it. If I go up against it again, I shouldn't have an issue. I was only totally expecting to meet Dr. Turret. This is usually the room layout when Dr. Turret shows up. But it's a Lantern of Fullis, actually. A Lantern of Fullis. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly or not. This guy is really annoying to fight. I'm not going to lie. Not as long as the Snowball Brothers. Snowball Brothers is basically... 
just two of these guys. And his, his attack is purple instead of yellow. I, I don't know the difference between them. I honestly can't tell you. I don't know what the difference between the yellow and the purple one is, but there's apparently enough of a difference for one to be yellow and be purple. I still have no idea how I'm supposed to get through a level of this without taking any damage. That's just... that's impossible. I wonder if even uh, Joe from Terrible Posture Games is able to do it. Painful Siphon. I'm not gonna like this, am I? I unlocked a new perk, Major Moose. I guess I took 100 plus damage without dying. Okay. So that's how you can do it. You use Painful Siphon, which takes health and it turns it into experience. Not necessarily a super great item to have. Not something I would use a lot. It looks like it's actually got a, a pretty low charge rate on it. It's because it balances out with the health. I got 50 of the secrets. So there were only two secrets, I think, in that level, and I missed one. That might actually be a little bit easier to use. It might be easier to use than the... What was it? The uh, the item that automatically um, levels up your weapon. Because if there's a lot of health laying around and I've got full life, then I can use that and get health back. And it charges... At least it seems to charge faster than the other one. Damage up as soon as I get a bullet in the face. Lovely. Although the other one I definitely kept for too long. By the time that I'd already leveled my gun up to 5, I should have changed out my item, and I didn't. So, keep that in mind for when I'm using this. Have I? No, I haven't charged it yet. It's almost charged. Maybe I can charge it in this room? No, probably in the next room. Where's the door for this room, actually? I don't see a exit door. Oh, it's over there. It's hidden off in the corner. Behind all the enemies. Actually, if enemies keep spawning, I might be able to charge in this room. But I don't think I'll need it by the time. Because there's already so many blue gems. I've got that blue gem increase. So every blue gem is worth more EXP. Which is nice. Which means I need less blue gems to level up. But it also might make Painful Siphon almost useless. Because I'm probably going to be level 5 before I get the chance to use it again. Yeah. And now it's level 5, and I don't miss anything to use it again. I can use it again, but I don't need to. I guess I can keep it on me just in case I need to use it in a pinch. Not really a good item to use in a pinch, though, because if I'm losing a lot of levels, I'm probably taking a lot of damage. If I'm taking a lot of damage, using Painful Siphon won't be so useful, because that will also damage me. So, at this point, Painful Siphon, not really a super good item to have now that I used it once. Unless I'm able to, unless I, not necessarily am able to, but unless I run into a situation where I have a lot of health and my weapon is leveled down a lot. Kind of like right now. Probably could have got away with not using it there, but might as well. You get two uses out of it. There's, there's plenty of health there, too. There's plenty of enemies to worry about and get my health back. So I don't have to worry about it a ton. Painful Siphon would not be an item that you would want if you were going for... A no damage run, that's definitely for sure. What is over here? I don't remember this in this room. I think I'm in this room before, but I don't remember actually this area existing. Was I just bypassing it before, or...? Okay. I could have gone up, but I didn't go up, so let's just go over here. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Ooh, magma. I love the Molten Metal. It's so it's so simplistic, and yet it looks so good. I brought this up in a little bit in a uh, in the Pixel Jam interview, but there's something about simplified graphics that, to me, just looks great. You can have all your photorealism that you want, and sure, it'll look good for a year or two, but there's something about simplistic graphics that it looks good, and it seems that the games that are more creative... And the games... Is there a fake wall over here? I can't remember. No. The games that are more creative and the games that are more unique and the ones that seem to stand out more are usually the ones that have the simplistic graphics because they're... 
not always made by indie teams, such as uh, Wind Waker. Let's just tell Wind Waker. When that game came out, a lot of people didn't like it. But it quickly became a uh, fan favorite amongst Zelda players and the Phantom Hourglass. I never played Wind Waker, but I did, did play Zelda's The Phantom Hourglass. And, you know, that was all right. I really liked the, I liked the art style in it. I liked the game, and it worked pretty well. So a lot of people are like, oh, well, it's got a simple art style. So that means the people making it probably aren't that professional and experienced. Not really true. It rarely is that ever true. Sometimes you'll get that when you have uh, programmer artwork, when you have like the same guy programming it that's arting, uh, doing the artwork for it, who is most likely a better programmer than they are an artist. So sometimes you'll get that in indie games, where you get games that are of interesting ideas and play well, but they just they, they look like crap. That doesn't necessarily mean they're bad, though. And usually the games that look worse are the ones uh, that do that are the ones that try to go for those realistic graphics and because they 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 don't have the ability to do those realistic graphics they end up turning out like crap so there's that fine line in your graphics there's that fine line is this gonna be a secret area no really up there probably is but i don't think i have the jump height nope Sometimes the graphics you can usually get away with more, but it's usually those indie games that try for the simplest, the uh, photorealistic or in detail graphics and can't make it. And instead of trying something simple and can make it, that end up not really looking too great. But then again, for me, looks don't always make it. Now, looks can make something more appealing uh, at the start or more attractive to get the interested in. Such as, there have been games that, okay, I don't like the way this game looks, so I'm not, not super interested in playing it. But then, if, if the if the mechanics look interesting, or if I do end up trying it out just on a whim, and I like the mechanics, then it is completely different. Actually, a moving platform that you're forced to have to use. Okay, this is different. This was unexpected. Is there a way that I can get up on that? Is there a ramp around here I can go up? I don't see any way up. I guess I just need need jump and jump height to get up there. No, 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 not the lava, not the lava, not the lava, not the lava! <laughs> not the lava! If I had more height. Man, I got I got triple jump, but I just, I do not have the jump height. It's the elevator full of, of guns, isn't it? Yeah, that's raining guns. It's raining bullets! Hallelujah, it's raining bullets! I don't know why you'd be excited about the, it raining bullets, but, uh, if you were, then that song would fit. It would definitely fit your ecstatic thoughts about bullets and rain, and rain bullets, and other such nonsense. Bullet rain sounds like an album. Is that is that going to be your parody of Bullet Train, of Judas Priest's Bullet Train, Bullet Rain? That sounds like an album or like some heavy metal song or a game even. Be a good game name, Bullet Rain or. Possibly a movie name. Action movie. Bullet Rain. That'd be, that'd be nice. Anything that involves a lot of action, probably Bullet Rain would work. Like Bullet Train worked. Come on. I only need to kill a few. I only need to do one more. I think one more. And I should be able to just go right up the middle. I'm not going to waste my time killing all of these if I really don't have to. And I really hope I don't have to. Come on. Come on. Come on! I'm just sitting still holding down the shoot button. Those enemies are the most boring enemies to fight because they they stay still. And I guess it'd be more interesting if you're actually going up the elevator, fighting them instead of the way I'm doing it by shooting them before I go in it, but it's still a lot safer to shoot them before I go in it. Who we got here? The uh, Flying Lantern, the Flying Snow Globe uh, Brothers, I'm looking the Lantern Brothers. This could be interesting. I am not doing well on health. And the Snow Globe Bros are good at killing me. Jeez. Ah. This game's hard. <laughs> and I fail once more. All right, well. You know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. And that's it for this episode of Tower of Guns. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Next time I'll come back and rattle on about some nonsense while trying to beat this game. Anyway, I'm Mega Pie Man. Talk to you guys all later.